Hey everybody, Chef Toby here. It is summertime, so I'm bringing you guys something that's beautiful, bright, and lemony. I present to you guys my lemon ermine frosting. What well, a lemon ermine is, it is a French roux buttercream that is constructed from a blonde roux with milk, sugar, and flour. And once the mixture is cooked and chilled, we whip in the butter in the end to give us an irresistible texture that isn't grainy and that isn't too sweet. This also holds up beautifully in the heat. You will have about an hour to an hour and a half if you're serving this outside. And guys, I'll tell you, this is the perfect frosting. It's not available anywhere else. This is created by me. You'll find all the ingredients you'll need in the video. So I'm gonna begin in my bowl by combining my one cup of sugar. I'm using granulated sugar. You can use super fine sugar, just don't use icing sugar. Gonna mix that together. And I'm going to combine that with seven and a half tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm also gonna throw in just a pinch of salt, literally a pinch of salt. I'm just gonna mix the flour and sugar together until everything is completely smooth. I don't see any grains of sugar, like whole little grains. You need to have everything broken apart really well. Okay? So now we're gonna move to the stove top. So I'm heating here in my pot. This is exactly three quarters of a cup of whole milk. And I'm started off on high heat. I'm gonna turn the heat down to about medium high. To that, I'm gonna add a half a cup of lemon juice. I'm using concentrated lemon juice from the bottle. Um, you can make your own concentrated lemon juice, but I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on all those lemons just to boil them down. So concentrated works best. And also along in here, I've added a zest from two lemons, and then I chopped that zest up to make it fine. So I'm just going to check to see if this is warm, and it is. So while this is warm, I'm going to just slowly just shake in my sugar and flour mixture. About a tablespoon or so at a time. And I'm doing that so to avoid any clumps on the bottom of my pot. So as soon as I feel that it's dissolved, I'll just shake it a little bit more. Now, if you note the shape of my whisk, I'm using this long, narrow whisk. This is called a French whisk. This is good to help you get the edges of your pot really well versus using a balloon whisk. So I'm just going to keep shaking in this flour sugar mixture slowly and as soon as I feel it's dissolved just add more. Now what this frosting is it is a cooked roux frosting and the roux is with uh, the flour and milk so we're technically making a blonde roux, except we're not browning the flour. The additional flat fat will come in at the end, which is the butter, which will be whipped in. But you'll see how this works. It's really neat. So I'm just whisking slowly. Well, not slowly, I'm, sift, I'm shaking in this flour and sugar slowly. And I'm just whisking vigorously. If I feel that it's boiling too rapidly, I'm going to turn down the heat. So, shaking that glass a little bit. So, I'm going to turn it down to medium because I want to work on medium heat now. I'm going to pour in my vanilla extract. And the vanilla extract I'm using exactly two and a half teaspoons. So I'm going to just keep stirring this and now what I'm going to do is switch to a wooden spoon because the wooden spoon will help me scrape now that I know that everything is smooth. Now we have to keep this moving. Do not stop stirring. So after this begins to thicken, I'm going to cook this on medium heat for exactly three minutes. I'm going to stir. This is going to become even more smooth and shiny. So I'm going to turn it down. We're talking about medium low. You don't want to work too high. 
because you don't want it to boil rapidly. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this for three minutes. So this is cooked for exactly about, I cooked it for about two and a half minutes because it came very thick. So I'm gonna show you guys a picture of what it looks, what it looks like after I pour this into the bowl. So I'm gonna pour this into the bowl. Okay, so this is done. This is nice and thick. It's kind of like a paste-like consistency. Now, if you were to taste this now, it's going to taste super sweet and probably super lemony. Let's see. It's going to taste kind of odd. Well, when we add the butter to this, it's going to whip out into a beautiful, lovely flavor. So I'm going to cover this with a plate, or you can use saran wrap and press it down on top. This will prevent it from having a film. I'm going to stick this into the refrigerator and I'm going to let this cool for at least four to six hours or even overnight. So you see in the picture what your final result is supposed to look like after you've cooked your roux. So I'll show you guys it. It's smooth, it's shiny, it's solid. You should be able to pick it up and it shouldn't leave any residue on your hands so that's what you're looking for so we have this thick roux paste here and we're gonna whip it up so I'm gonna put this, this in the bottom of the bowl of my stand mixer I'm using the geek chef stand mixer in case you guys are wondering so I'm using the whip attachment and I'm gonna just whip this on high I'm gonna let this, I've been whipping my milk mixture here I'm mean, I whipped it for about three minutes so far I don't think I need to go to full five I'm gonna add plenty of yellow food coloring this is uh, called buttercup yellow by Wilton just give it a good amount I want it to have a deep yellow color so I'm gonna whip that together So what I'm going to do now, after mixing in that buttercup yellow, I'm going to slowly add my butter. The butter is at room temperature. It's soft but not mushy. You don't want the butter to be mushy, okay? We just want it to be soft. I'm going to add the butter one tablespoon or so at a time. I'm going to just let it whip until the butter is completely combined in. And the butter is one cup of butter that softened and I'm using unsalted butter cut into small cubes. So after you see your first little dot of butter has been dissolved, we're gonna add more butter. Okay, I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons and just let it whip. Now you're going to notice that the color of the frosting is going to lighten tremendously as we add all the butter and air. Do not rush this process because you don't want to have little dots of butter that hasn't been whipped properly into this frosting. Just have any bits of butter that go up the side, just stop the machine and just press them back down. I'm just going to whip it until all that butter is completely dissolved. Okay, so I see it's just a little tiny dot of butter in there. I'm just going to add more butter. So just repeat this process over and over until all the butter is added. Everything is very smooth. This can take about 10 to 15 minutes, up to 10 to 15 minutes. Just adding a little at a time, letting it be 30 to 45 seconds or so after each addition. Don't rush this process because you, your end result will be worth it if you're patient.
And just remember to thoroughly check your machine, your bowl really good. Adding a little bit more butter at a time, like we did previously. Now you may note that your frosting may begin to thicken up and change in color as you see here. And I've got about half a cup of butter added to this now. So I'm going to continue to add more butter. So this is coming out nice. Um, like I said, if you taste it in the beginning, don't freak out. Just add all the butter because the flavor will change, believe me. Now, if the end result is a little bit too soft, we can just refrigerate it because this is butter, of course. So I'm just going to continue to add the remaining butter. Now, as it's getting so thick, you can be, be in, as it's beginning to thicken more, you can kind of speed up how much butter you add. You can start adding like a couple of tablespoons at a time. Do you see? It whips up quicker because we've already incorporated so much butter. But do wait until all the butter is dissolved before you add more. I've uh, combined all my butter into my frosting. One cup of butter. You see the frosting has lightened up a lot. It's thickened up quite a bit. You will not be disappointed in this frosting, I'll tell you. It's light, it's not too sweet, it's the perfect texture. You don't have that gritty texture that some people can detect in buttercream frosting. Um, this is similar to a Swiss meringue type texture. Um, almost like whipped cream. No, it's on more on that level. So I'm going to, uh, I don't think this is too runny, actually. I think it's perfect. See how thick that is? Let me just hit this beautiful Extremely beautiful. Please hit that thumbs up if you like this so far. Oh, I can't wait to pipe this out. So you see, this is was made with flour and milk, but this is beautiful. But I think I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge for about 10 minutes, just to be double sure that it's firm enough. But you see, it's pretty thick. It's not runny, but I just want it to be a little bit on the chilled side because I have hot hands. So these are my cupcakes that I'm going to uh, pipe my frosting on. And uh, these are my new and approved lemon cupcakes. So if you'd like to see the recipe, please head over to my baking channel, Less Sugary Sweet. You'll see it pop up in the iCard up here. And you'll find it as in the description box as well. So I'm going to just put some of my frosting here inside my pastry bag. I'm using Wilton Pastry Tip number 1M. I did chill it in the refrigerator for a few minutes because I do have hot hands. And I'm just going to show you guys how beautiful this pipes. I start from the center and just go all the way around. Let's see, it Let's see how beautiful it pipes. See how that way you can pipe it? Or you can just start from the outside and just work your way into the middle and just continue to make swirls. And that's how I'm going to do all my cupcakes. But you see it pipes beautifully. There's no problems with it piping at all whatsoever. Okay. And um, if you just put your cupcakes inside the refrigerator after you pipe on them. And just let them sit in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. That will set up perfectly. And... Um, this should be able to endure the heat for a good hour. But um, I wouldn't say just take these and set them out in the sun and let the sun melt. But they'll hold up in the heat pretty good. Just depending on how hot it is there in your area. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please, please hit that thumbs up. I'm going to give this a taste test. You'll see the taste test in the beginning of this video. 
But I'm going to show you how I'm going to garnish my cake. So I have some lemon slices here. I have some wedges that I just quarter them and just stick it in the top. Just a quick and easy final garnish. People know that it's lemon. So here is the outcome of my cupcakes. I used the lemon cupcake recipe. To see the updated recipe for the lemon cupcake, please check the description box. So I'm going to give this a taste. And also, if you're watching the other video, if you're watching the uh, cupcake video, don't forget to stop by Cooking with Tovia to see the recipe for the frosting. So here goes. Beautifully decorated. I can't wait to taste so I'm just going to peel the paper. So you see how moist, beautiful crown so far. Beautiful crown. So I'm going to pull that. You can. Okay, so now we're going to taste. The first thing I want to taste is the ermine, or the ermine, which is the frosting. Mmm. The lemon flavor is absolutely beautiful. The texture is nice and creamy. It's not too rich. It's just perfect. So I'm gonna taste the cake. And you see I rip it apart. You see it's very, it's very moist. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. The cake is so soft, it melts in your mouth. Beautiful golden flavors there from the lemon and of course from the butter. Mm. So there you have it. Please leave a comment down below what you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And thank you everyone who's purchased items from my wish list. I really appreciate all of you guys' support. Please remember to live and be well, and let's do what we can to come together and love each other.